Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 211. Hit the end of April, the very end of April. I thought there was another day in April. I mean, another two days in April. There is another day in April. Because I need every single day possible. Well, we're going to talk about that in just a few moments. Uh, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, let's go ahead and say hi to everybody here. Jacob's reminded us that he has a hard stop in 1.5 hours, which is okay because our agenda today is triage, status, and then we'll take questions and comments. We are not doing any design discussions because, uh, well, we're going to talk about status, and after that, uh, let's get out of here and go do the things that we talk about in the status. I already said we're recording these, right? Right. All right. We're recording these. Uh, Bob, are you ready for doing the triage thing? Let's go ahead and get through it. All right. We have more in here than I'd like, but that's mostly Sean's fault. Um, As usual. Uh, this first one, Bob. Um, it would be helpful if I could see what you were doing. Oh. Um, I assume you're talking about the one that yeah, I deferred for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, still deferring it. All right. Um, we're not doing this in um, uh, preview zero, right? Yeah, no, no, no. It's not a pre it, no. If it were preview zero, I would, you would. I don't know. Maybe feel more guilty about skipping it. Um. All right. Fair enough. Okay. All right then. Um. Core integration test host intermittently crashes when calling MS Live set internal external UI. Core integration. This is core. The integration test. Yeah, that's interesting. I haven't seen this, and I run it a lot. Uh, is this on the server or the CI server, Sean, or on no, your No, this machine? is locally. Locally. Hmm. And it actually happened quite a few times uh, this weekend when I was working on those container changes. I wonder if this is related to uh, the upgrade habits of different members of the team. Oh, the fact that I'm not upgraded to the latest and greatest all the time? Actually, you're probably pretty recent since you had to reinstall on your new yeah well, your new box and and i think i'm i'm only one visual studio update behind because it's not been 14 days or it's probably getting close to the 14 days well i guess i was behind rob then because i'm pretty sure i was on 16.91 until today <laughs> okay I, there's probably some interop problem given the description of this so um yeah, let, well, obviously we'll take it four, and we'll try hunting this down. Um, it would be helpful if I could see it. Um, I don't know that I've ever – yeah, I've never seen this. But I don't run in Visual Studio Test Explorer either, because Visual Studio Test Explorer crashes on me when I try to open the tests. Um, so this – but you've seen it from the command line too, which I have not seen. This is, this is bizarre. So in Visual Studio, it doesn't fail. <laughs> it just stops running. Well, it crashes so, the process, right? Like when I run in Visual Studio, it'll say like 25 test pass, zero failed. And then I have to go look in the console window why it didn't yeah. run all 200. Yep. Yep. They they, they hide it. They, oh, yeah. This is, this is one of many reasons why I don't use the Visual Studio Test Explorer. But uh, I'm not... I don't remember how it worked in the command line, but I want to say it's possible that that happened on the command line as well, where it just reported success even though it crashed. So, you know, usually when when I get mm -hmm. crashes in the test runner, it it fails. It shows a big red message and and fails the the test. Um, you know, but, we're probably not pinning something or something and clearly blowing the process up. I'm, I'm maybe, sure this but is, it's also not terribly – it's pretty reliable, but, you know, 1-9 is not, not – 9 percent <laughs> success rate? No, 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 1-9. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, they, they, they count, I think, from the beginning, not after the dots. Anyway. Um, yeah. So that means one nine is ninety percent, right? No, nine percent. 
Um, one nine is not one point nine percent. Zero point nine, zero point zero 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 nine percent. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm right. Um, <laughs> but but you know so but it's not that reliable. Okay. And usually this is one of the things. If 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 you if you rerun it, it, it tends to succeed. Yeah. Is no. this consistent failure? No, I've never seen it happen multiple times in a row. Okay. Okay. All right. This is all right. This is a good thing to happen. We need to hunt, hunt this down in Wix for at least take a look at this P invoke because it's really ancient P invoke and it's very possible we didn't know what we were doing when it was done and needs to be fixed. So let's put that in four. We need to go fix it. This one is more problematic, I think, or uh, troubling. Uh, this says that. Right. The payload is not assigned a download URL, but it should have been this example, right? So basically, these are not getting filled in for the harvested payloads, the other yes. payloads that come from the semi-sci. It's, right. yeah. it's the way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to use the unresolved URL for the MSI. But the problem is it's getting the resolved URL, and then it's trying to format it and see it doesn't change, so it doesn't use it. Yeah, OK. Cool. That's that's clearly busted. Uh, we probably have to fix that in preview zero, um, and I probably busted it recently. So uh, why don't you give that to me, and we will have to put it in preview zero, because that's a pretty normal case to have happen. Thank you for the test case to cover it. Um, moving on, force integrity check. Uh, well, we can't turn this on, and so the guy wants us to add this switch. I don't know why he wants us to add this switch. It's one of those security things, right? Yeah, but it doesn't so, say that course. he needs it for some scenario, but OK. And so we can't set this in Wix, and I don't know how we'd set it afterwards, because we're not going to force everybody to sign their bundles um, every time. And I don't know how we set it afterwards, but we'd have to set this in like Insignia. Hey, Ron. You missed roll call, is, but that's OK. We're happy you're here. Is this something like you can do with LinkBin, or? I don't know. I, I haven't looked at it at all. The big question is, are we? I, 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 I'd like more motivation on, and this is common because of device guard or not, but the device guard people that asked us for device guard support didn't mention this thing. So I don't know. No, I know device guard doesn't depend on it. Right. So who cares about this thing? Like, what does this thing do? I think it would help in that corrupted install or a download scenario that people have complained about before. Oh, right, because the signature is not checked. That's actually kind of interesting. Signature is not checked unless you explicitly check it. But I don't know if this is something we can do after the fact. I don't, I don't think it is. I assume we have to do it when building the executable. You know, right now, we have to do it when building the stub, so. And I tried reading this documentation, and I didn't see enough detail to figure out. What is it? I don't. What it actually is doing, and whether it, it's possible for us to even do it after the fact. Well, this is on the supply. And enable password. Yeah, so here's what it is. They don't say why you would want to. You must add the page hash. Ugh. With that, mm, yeah, that's. Mm. <laughs> I don't. There's I don't no, think oh, that, that would work. So it's not just a bit. Yeah. The, well, at least not the sign tool thing, right? The question is, it just a bit that Windows is like, all right, I see this bit oh, now. Oh, the, I need to go okay. check all the page hashes. Page um, hashes a sign tool thing. Okay. Well, then it. It's po It's assuming still possible. Assuming it's a bit. Assuming it's just a bit. We could probably set it when we're, you know, assembling the yeah. axi. If not, I, but he, I, I'm still missing the. Oh, the following. Here we go. Here are the following features that force integrity. Windows biometric LSA. Yeah, we're not any of those things. I don't know. Windows Security Center app in it. DLL object manage filter registration and extended press filters. We're none of those. No, this is obviously old doc, so I wouldn't 
force integrity of plug and play. Yeah, we're none of these things. So I mean, I think this is mainly for kernel drivers. Yes, yes. Like we have a customer at FireGiant that I think has set this, um, but I don't know why because they do kernel driver stuff. But I don't know why we would use this in burn. Uh, okay. I, um. Well, I mean, isn't there isn't there some benefit just inherent in having the OS check the signature when you run it? Validate the page hashes of every page, probably. I mean, probably some overhead too, but you know, yeah. Yeah, sure. But but can 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 you not imagine some IT department somewhere going, oh, we should set that, enforce that, because you know there's a group policy setting for this thing. I, I could accept that nobody's asked for it before, and this one isn't asking for it that way. No, I understand. So I'm, I just, I, I'm not again. I'm not, if someone's sorry, so, I'm if not someone, saying, I'm not saying we should do it. Okay. Because I think there's way more involved here than than you know. I, I agree is value based on what we've heard so far. I'm just saying, as a concept, it's not a bad thing. It just comes down to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can can we do it at all? They deleted and something they could do. They didn't answer this. I don't like this issue. There's so much about this issue I dislike because I just like they didn't motivate it, and I just don't. Yes, someone could do this. I have no idea how important this is in the world of anything to bother doing. That's the thing that's for, I'm yeah. frustrated with. Okay. So. Um, we should just, all right, I'm going to kick this bug out. Uh, I, I will go figure out how I want to word it, and I will kick this bug out, and then they can come back with a new issue with better motivating all of this. And then, it, and if it does come back, it goes into, I don't know, 4X, right? Until I mean, someone wants to step up and figure out how to do it. Should right. we just stick whip required and suspend it? Would no. that be easier? <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Because in a whip, they're going to have to motivate it, too. Yeah, fine. That's fine, too. I'm just like, you delete all the template, you only put one thing in it, and then you don't even tell us why we should do this. Oh, it's frustrating. All right. It's not immediately apparent why we would bother. All right. Yes, you're right. It needs a whip required, and then stick it in 4X or suspend it and we're off to, you know, if someone wants to try to do it. Okay. Or come back in this thing and say, oh, no, no, here, here. Well, it's still going to need a whip. But really come back. Oh, here's why. This is really important. Oh, that's interesting to know. I don't know how far we want to go down this rabbit hole. Well, the fact that this has been available since Vista, and this is the first time we're hearing about it, yeah. I'm not terribly concerned. Yeah, and uh, the fact that we we solved device guard problems, right? People came at us yeah, for device yeah. guard problems, and then this well, force clearly, integrity this check is, never came up. Clearly, device guard was the you know the serious. Yeah, like like that was a serious issue. To this problem, right? Right. All right. Moving on. Uh, this thing. This was moved to a discussion as well, or. Um, yeah, t two uh, people was, basically submitted an issue, and I converted one of them to a discussion. Okay. Um, so I saw this blog. I was telling Bob, I saw this blog entry come out. And I'm like, wow, that's an interesting change that they're making. They're basically deprecating large parts of the .NET framework. I'm like, yeah, okay, that'll that's kind of nice. We'll cut the tail. It's like, man, they have to be you know careful when they all do all that, especially since they're doing these SHA changes, because it's going to break everybody that has .NET framework packages out there already. There's no way they would have put that behind the same URL that they were shipping them before, that they're already shipping, would they? Surely they wouldn't do that. that. They wouldn't oh, do yes, that. Oh, yes, they would, and don't call them surely. I was just like, oh, my God. And then, then, and then I was like, I mean, it went back to actually doing the work I was doing, and oh, my gosh, here we are. Um, I, like, did I misunderstand and that existing bundles and anybody else that is dependent on these things that are out there right now are all broken right now. Like, down, installs are failing. Downloads, verifications are failing right now. Yeah, they're all broken. They're all broken. Well, I don't, I don't know how many versions back, but from 4.6.2 onward, yeah, the, those are definitely all broken. Yeah, well, and also they're... remember, they, they killed off all the bundles 
of before that, sorry, bundles, all the regis for um, the versions that are uh, uh, out of support. Not yet. They, the URLs are still there, you're saying? They will delete them in a couple months. Right. So then they're going to break oh. everybody else. Well, wait, so did they did they actually update the out of support versions of the redist with SHA-2? No, I think Sean said those no. work still. So from, from 462 onwards, the supported versions were all replaced with SHA-2. So, so the only ones that still I work haven't, I haven't are the ones that are out of support. I, I, I didn't actually try the old okay. URLs. I, I, was just... I assume they are still the same thing. Which is just weird. They left behind the things that you know would still work. They broke the stuff that's in support. Yeah. So, so Joe's like, "Hey, we need to go get this fixed," and I'm like, "I'm afraid to fix it." <laughs> Rapidly. Face your fears. Why? Why? Because well, if we go and I think <laughs> they're going to have to revert these things. Oh. Because in the discussion, it, they were pointing to some. Yeah, but they got they got the first line too. Like I saw that they pointed at it and they said, "Hey, this is what you need to do." They got first line support. I don't. I'm waiting for them to get hit by everybody else. It's like you know, none of this stuff works anymore. Like I'm waiting for them to be hit by a you know like billion dollar customer. Right, right. Like let let's wait for one of the Fortune Five to call them up and be like, "Uh, what happened?" I'm I'm a little like my guess is that this was security motivated and that they will not revert it. That I mean they didn't say why. I thought it was cutting their tail. If it is security motivated, you think they have an attack on SHA one or something? I mean, I get why you do it going forward. I get why you want to motivate everybody to switch to the URLs. And we certainly could do that. I mean, and, and we can look at the process for doing that at a appropriate timing, but they can't go through and just hose everybody and have this roll through, unless I'm just not understanding and this isn't really as bad a problem as it seems like it is. But Grab and Crown, who don't know who that is, uh, but hi, welcome. Uh, glad you made it. I think you made it just in time for your issue. Um, has pointed out that this is all installers that needed it to download are broken. As long as they're being safe and actually verifying. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and anybody using burn was doing it, because if you don't use this, then you're going to end up using a hash, which is even more broken than the signature checks. But um, So this is why I'm... You think they're going to revert it? And then we would have to re-revert it. Exactly. I'm, I'm afraid they're going to revert it, and then we're going to have to re-revert it. So I, I think if we – whatever we do here, I think we keep the old ones in place. Um, and add the new – add new ones, essentially. So, basic, so don't remove – the authoring for the old ones and add new ones with the new SHA-2 hat. Basically, add a NetFX 462 SHA-2 SHA <laughs> and add that. Um, I don't think we should break them either. And then the, sh the question is, well, what's the URL for the SHA-2? And the answer is, well, it happens to be the same as the old one when we start, but it's not going to... I, I just I don't see how they do this. As this rolls out farther and farther, if the machine doesn't yet have the required .NET framework installed outside of the installed package, a new machine, for example, they're broken. <laughs> I, I, I think everyone is relying on the fact that, that you know, with Windows 10, it's way more common for, for updates to happen, um, you know, compared perhaps to, you know, 7 and 8. So they're counting on the fact that most machines don't need to install the redist. They're counting on this being a, you know, point zero point X percent problem. So it's okay to, you know, break all the rules.
Yeah. Our fix is to add them as SHA-2. I think we should leave the old ones there. I don't think we should update everybody to SHA-2 mystically, like just by picking it up. I think that's fine. This does bring up an interesting question about how is this going to work in four if we don't support signature checking? Yeah. Well, yeah, it already. Well, the signature was never. I mean, the SHA, SHA one and SHA two certificates that they use to sign do not have the same thumbprint, right? So this is not something that that right. even if you were a signature, even if you checked signature, you're you're not you're not going to get the same thing. It's not. Right, but they're updating the .NET. They're updating the package at the URL without, like, people, if we were verifying by hashes this whole time, people would have been complaining more often because they routinely update the packages. Sorry, weren't we? No, we've been verifying .NET by signature verification this whole time. Interesting. And I didn't realize that either until I, I think what, what's happening is we always did it through heat that gave us the certificate. Yeah. And then that's basically bypassing the switch we did to change suppress yeah, cause we didn't, signature verification. Cause it's all about payload, so the data is there, so Burn was using it. Yeah. But it's still broken when you change the certificates. Correct? Yes. There's no okay. fixing that. Yeah, there's just okay. no fixing that, because it's, it's still broken. I That's mean, the security. Oh, a few more, maybe it's down here. But I mean, if Microsoft is willing to update the package behind the URL. John Shed, come on, John Shed, you can do better. <laughs> I used to work with him. Yeah, we both used to work with John Shed. Oh, that's right, yeah. So the quickest we're going to be update your bootstrapper yourself in the near future. Also, like, what about all the people that have already shipped their stuff? And I, oh, oh, gosh. This, this, you've already shipped your software. It's out there. We've broken you. You can't, like, okay, now you have to, People have to come to you and get a new version. No. <laughs> no. <sighs> come on, chop shit. I understand it's a simple change, yet it is impactful when something that was working breaks and needs to be updated not even what about the people that don't update Ugh. all right well fortunately there is a workaround for everybody else they can get the new URLs and things like that so nobody's blocked right now no well, blocked from making a fix blocked from fixing their bundles right like yeah. there's nothing in the way is said the question is um, when do we introduce the SHA-2 versions of these things and then I'm afraid that when we do and we point at the current URLs, eventually, I just don't see how they don't revert, go back, and then move. But then, see, and the longer they take, the longer more people move to the URLs, and they think, oh, they're just creating a mess here. This is really bad. For <laughs> um, so, all right, so we add the SHA-2 so that we can point to two different things, whichever one it is. Um, wherever the URL ends up, whether they stay and keep breaking the existing world or they move it to a new URL. Or heck, they could create both, right? They could create a new URL and the old one and deal with that. All right. So, um, yeah, that's the change. So for me, the more interesting thing here is I didn't realize V3 was doing signature verification for these. That the code yeah. wasn't missing or that, yeah, that, that it was still being used. Um, so I don't know how, whether it's a good idea that we ripped out signature verification in four. Yeah, given the .NET framework, 
uh, has been changing quietly for us and working. Yeah. I mean, if we want to, if we want to keep it removed, maybe we should only allow it for exe packages to keep people from doing whatever they were trying to do before. Well, that very rarely worked. I, I, I don't. We removed it because the. Most people didn't need the feature, and the hash, sorry, we switched the default in Wix because most people didn't need the signature verification feature, that is the ability to update on the, the remote server, um, which really only works for XDs anyway that have the same way of being detected when you swap them out on the server. Most people didn't need that feature, and more of them hit the problems where when you try to do a signature check and you're not a Microsoft product, then you can end up not being able to verify your uh, certificate. And so that just introduced way more failures than the value it provided most people. So we switched the default. And the old code was there for anybody that was still using it, including .NET Framework. So your point about not having it for is very correct, that maybe we have to bring it back such that if you use it, it's there for you. And we don't default it. We don't. That's not the thing we start with. Um, it's not even necessarily the one that we recommend, but except in probably the case of Donut Framework, given their behavior. That's probably what we've ended up with. So we do need to bring it back. Um, I mean, do you disagree? No, okay. I was just <laughs> making sure. Uh, sorry, <laughs> my, my, my long way went. I, I, I don't. Yeah. yeah, we probably have to. Are you talking about bringing back signature verification? At least support for it in the engine and the ability to set it on. And then we just have to figure out how much we expose it through the language. Like, can you only do it through remote payload? or not. Well, as the person who took it out, not it. <laughs> Wasn't, there was a feature that got taken out as part of that that I never learned about. The catalog, is that, what yeah. was the relationship? Windows added that for their bundles because they cat sign everything because that's just the way that they view the world. So would that have to come back as well, or? No. No, we don't. We don't. Most things aren't catalog signed because nobody catalogs. <laughs> it's an it's an it's an OS thing. It's it's started and with a, drivers and a driver thing. Yeah, it's a driver thing. People that do drivers sometimes catalog sign, but you have to install the catalog. I mean, they're they're complicated way of do, it's a complicated way of doing signing that saves you a lot on the signing time or something like that, because you can get all the hashes. Basically, you get all the hashes of the files, and you sign a tiny file instead of signing all the individual files. And it could very well be related to something that are, they're really Byzantine build process. It's like, yeah, this is just the way we do things. So um, It's not a bad thing. It, it is actually kind of cool if you're doing anything you know, in a driver. But yeah, it's pain. It's just weird given the way that, you know, everything else gets signed. Yeah, I'm just walking through the whole repercussions of all this, and it's like, wow. Wow. Um, so is bringing it back a uh, preview zero? No. No, we don't have to bring this back in preview zero. OK. Because um, it's it's additive. <laughs> um, and, and we need to sit and think about the language a little bit, but it does not have to be in preview zero. We can bring it back afterwards. Um, and right now, we we can introduce the 462 SHA hash, but I mean, I'm not doing a, we're not doing a three build for this, so it's just kind of a, yeah, here's how you solve that problem. 
all right, so I think the, the end result of all this is that here's how you solve it. Here's the pain point that you're in, and we don't have a great answer to go forward. Jacob has asked, is this going to break, this is going to break a lot of people, and just read, is it, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, now, I'll, I'm going to, how many of these do we do it for? How many of these do we do it for? I'm sorry. Oh, of the of the uh, .NET Framework ones. Yeah. Given that it's well, four six two and above. Do we well, do we, it for four seven, four seven one, four eight? We actually don't have package definitions for four seven. We ah. never. Yeah, those aren't committed. Like we haven't built a three with those yet. So I think it's just four six two, four eight, and maybe four seven two. Fine by me. I'm. I'm. I, I. I just like the fact that we, you know, carry so many of these uh, things forever, especially if they're going to actually physically go away from the web. It would be just fine if we. They you know, can't go away from the web. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Microsoft disagrees. Good. Yeah, good luck with that. They're going to have to figure out. A, I just. I don't know how they're not going to get pushed into told. Hey, you have to put this back. But um, and they really should come up with a a proper way of doing this, and then we'd follow the rules. They've always we've asked so many times for them to say, "Yeah, just do this." Like, well, here's your FW link, and that's fine. Like, you guys really should formalize this. But I guess it didn't, you know, hurt them for ten years. So yeah, it went that long. Um, yeah. So I've never figured out how to pronounce this guy's name, but I think it's Jose. Like he was asking if we would accept the PR. So if we say we're accepting the PR that looks like this, then he might do it. Um, no, not like this. No, uh, we need to put in the whole. Yeah, we'll take it as a SHA two. You know, NFX four six two SHA two redist, um, and we would take that and put it in three. So that when the 314 builds come out, they'll have it, um, you know. But we're not actively spending time on 314 builds as we get the 40 builds out. But there will be a, we will need to talk. We're talking about 40 status, uh, which is fine. Um, but we need to get 40 previews that are out, top of order line thing. We need to do that, and then we will need to talk about when we do a 314 build so that we can say tell people, hey, if you want to try out 40, uh, and if you want to try out 40 preview zero, here's the 314 build that will help you update right. to this and then jump over to 40 preview zero. But without it, the all the, without all the other functionality, I don't think we bother with 40 preview zero, which is why I think the 314 build comes out when we have a preview one build when we think, hey, here's much more of the functionality of Wix 4, and here's your 314 build that goes with it. So coming back here, we'll, we would take this PR and it will show up in that 314 build that comes out probably with preview one, not that we've discussed when the next 314 build comes out. So that's that's what will happen here. In the meantime, yeah, it'll stand as a, yeah, this is this is the thing you have to do, and Microsoft probably needs to adjust their, um, I, I just don't know how they don't, okay. Anyway, so yes, yes, if we take the PR, it would be that. And, and if he submits the PR, if he's already submitted it, or is he's typing it up right now and he's not on the meeting, assuming that he's not grabbing crown, which I don't think, I'm guessing that grabbing crown is probably uh, Nathan really? Brown. I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess, just given the approach to it. Um, um, graven crown? Graven? 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 Oh, man. Now I know how all those YouTube personalities feel when they see people's names and have to say them. Uh, they're They're not just their names, they're their handles. Anyway, um, if the PR comes in, it'll be a easy, you know, review com comment. Hey, just add SHA two to the places here um, for these, and it'll come out in the next three fourteen build. That probably is aligned with preview one. When, but we will discuss that at some point. You don't think we need one for preview zero? I d no, because I don't think because it's only command line tool and it's not going to bring your MS build or any of that kind of stuff with you. So yeah, that's that's why. But we haven't had the debate, so 
Um, that and preview zero is turn out to be hard. So engraved crown, engraved crown, engraved crown. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, I, I'm less, I'm much less worried about the next build at 314. Um, if this PR comes in, yeah, if you take it 314, get it in four, need the SHA two, um, and then in four. I guess arguably in four we would we could consider only taking the new ones and trimming all the old ones since that's their intent. I already trimmed all the old ones. So there was only four. There's no four six one. There's only four six two. Well, um, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. How far back I went. Right. But the ones that they are going to delete in a few months, I've already deleted from. Okay, so you knew they were already gone. So that's not a they're already out of support, so I deleted them. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I, there's there are a few versions but that are still in support technically, but did not get updated with SHA two. Those are still in four. But I think we should just update the hashes to the newest ones and just be done in four yeah at least until four, I think, we bring back yeah, signature verification exactly I, I i think you're right sean we should just go with yeah here's what right. it is in four in the in the preview zero time frame here's what they were in the preview one time frame it's going to be different numbers anyway because we're probably going to, have to go back to signature checks so i think you're right i think that's probably the right thing to do for four uh, preview zero or if this is a bug in preview zero we'll deal with it like i'm not gonna i, I don't I don't care that deeply about this for preview zero either in the end. Was I mean, I, on the preview zero list? What's that? Was NetFX extension on the preview list? Preview zero? Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, it I was. Check. I think I so. had to update yes. 4.8 already because my integration tests were <laughs> downloading it for layout. <laughs> oh, you were downloading. All right, so we've already got that one for. Okay, fine. Then let's let's put it for. All right, so uh, that means we we either take this issue. Let's not take this issue. Um, let's leave this one being the three one, just because it it captures the whole problem extremely well. Yeah, yeah. So th this is a. In contrast to the last issue we were just looking at, this is a fantastic issue. Um, I should give praise where it is deserved. This is a fantastic issue. Did a great job explaining all the problems and really appreciate it. All right. Um, so this one should stay as we work our way through what the final answer is. We should, if Sean hasn't updated all the numbers in four accidentally because he had to, um, <laughs> we should probably get another issue to make sure that we get all of the ones for preview zero, a preview zero bug that updates all the hashes there just to get that right. And it should link back to this issue as the, here's the thing we're doing for preview zero. This will need a real solution um, in 4.0 proper, right? Yeah, I only did 4.8. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's what I would expect because <laughs> the other ones weren't changing. Anyway, so, and this, when was this? This was just a week ago. This was like Blog over the weekend week. or like Friday, maybe. Was it Friday? Oh, I see. Wow, the days just blur. Oh, yeah, because it's I, Thursday. Yeah, and it wasn't. Yeah, it was like almost a week ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I submitted my changes on Sunday. Ah, like, OK. Just, this was one of the changes on Sunday. All right, great. I saw those go by going, no. So there's no like more changes. I pushed changes like two Sundays in a row. Yep. So two Sundays ago, it was not like it was before. Yep. And when I tried to work, this last weekend, it had broken. Ha <laughs> ha, perfect. Fantastic so world. Yep, okay. That's that's the, that's the answer. New issue for the preview zero, which Sean, along the same lines of what Sean has done to keep things working, that'll hold us for preview zero. And Wix 3 needs a different answer that will go into the 3.14 whenever that comes out, which we're not talking about right now. And then we also need probably a, another issue to bring back the signature verification, unless we want to talk about it some more, to bring that back and then move 4.0 up proper to use that kind of mechanism. Oh my gosh. So you're saying for 3, 3.14, we would do the SHA-2 suffix? Yes. 
if someone and keep the old yeah. ones. Yes. And but for four, the SHA two downloads would replace. Yes. And my hope is that by the time 4.0 releases, the SHA-2 URLs will be correct under the, assumption that I, under the assumption that they're not going to be the ones they are now. Uh, okay. It feels weird to have two different solutions. I don't disagree, but I don't feel like we should carry the SHA-2 concept going forward when the SHA-1 is clearly on a dead path, right? So it's this weird anachronism that we'd be carrying forward if they were the same name. Yes. So Maybe we, we, we could create an alias. We could create an alias for them too, if we need to. True. It just kind of breaks the idea of 314 as a, you're helping you to get to four kind of release. Um. That's fair. So you're saying instead of adding the SHA-2 prefix, we should add the SHA-1 prefix to the existing ones? So if you want to maintain backwards, if you go to 3.14, you add SHA-1 to keep the old packages. Otherwise, you're getting the Wix-4 behavior. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. I'm not sure I'm actually saying that, but... Um... Well, that would, that would be the breaking change that brings you to the forward future, <laughs> to, to the future way of thinking. We would move you to the SHA-2 hashes invisibly if you built with 314, but you would still be able to reference the SHA-1 hashes. That don't work. That, yeah, that don't work, but I'm still betting we'll have to, but yeah. We should just, that's why I'm not in a hurry. I don't, Let's not we're not let's not do the three fourteen fix before preview zero. Let's revisit this in two weeks. All right. Cause we're not gonna get the fix out now anyway. So in two weeks we'll we will have had time to go poke at the Visual Studio team and be like or the Dotnet framework team specifically and be like, All right guys, um really, really, really need to think about this change. And then if they're like, no, we're sticking with it, well, then we'll know the answer in 3.14, which in your case, as you point out, would just be like, all right, we switched them all. You're all broken. Or, you know, you just have to move over here. Microsoft has decided that all your old stuff will be broken, remain broken. Okay, so we keep this open until yes. next meeting? Until next meeting, yes. Okay. I feel like we have a pretty good handle on the angles of it. Um, here's the thing. Our next move is after Microsoft's next move, and I know we're not, like, we haven't asked Microsoft for their move, but I'm going to go make a point of getting information from them to say, hey, are you guys really going to stick with this? Not just a, hey, I left a blog comment on a comment on your blog. Not that Jose has, you know, less pull, but we can go through the formal, formal channels from Fire Giant and try to poke them and say, like, all right, guys, really, you need to think this through, rather than, hey, here's just this random blog comment. Um, I just can't. <laughs> anyway, so that. That is what we all need to do. All right. Cool? Cool. Sure. I knew I didn't. As soon as I saw this issue, I knew it was going to be a not fun. All right. That's all the issues. Sean didn't bring the hard ones today. All right. Um, how many older MSI installers use burn? and do the same verification. Older MSI installers use part to do the same verification. That's a good question. I don't know, Jacob. You've, you've got a very good question. I just don't know how widespread. Oh yeah, no, how many, sorry, did I say MSI? I, I, I saw MSI installers. MS, yeah, I don't know how many Microsoft products will, would be broken by this sort of thing. Well, I just don't know. They don't count for us. They don't tell us have to, just like the rest of all of you out there that don't talk to us. It's all good. All right, moving on. Let's talk about preview zero, which is our focus. 4.0 preview zero. 4 preview zero. Rix 4 preview zero. Um, this list is the same as last week, except I added the missing NetFX util. 
<laughs> I forgot which one I forgot last week that I put back on there. Um, ball? Was it ball that I put in the front? Okay. Uh, ball extension. So just a quick reminder, this is the XE based tooling for previews. We'll have the XE based tooling. So think more like candle light, not MS build. Um, it will be able to build MSIs, MSMs, and bundles. And the reason we're talking about all this NetFX stuff is because we can build bundles and it will include the NetFX extension um, and UI and util, which is, you know, covers the bases. You can build some interesting things with that. Um, the Wix V3 to V4 source source code convert is working, partially thanks to not just people on this call, but also uh, Ron, who's on the chat, that has helped fix some nice bugs that um, in the end. Uh, and we will bring all the MS build and all that kind of stuff back later. We're not talking about that right now. All right. So release date, which is the thing that all anybody cares about, because we've already talked about all the other stuff ad nauseum. Um, put a line in the sand, uh, a stake in the ground, very muddy ground that could wiggle a lot of May 4th because that was a great date and it was feeling pretty good about it. And I don't know how I'm feeling about it right now. It's coming fast. It is Tuesday from now. Um, we have the repo reorganization stuff. I have it mostly, I feel like I'm getting it under control. Um, I need to, uh, and I think it's all going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of I thinks left there, but I have two solid days of development here, plus whatever I can scrounge on this weekend to put it all back together and then lean heavily on the fantastic amount of integration tests that Sean has brought over um, from V3 and made work in V4, which is dirty, dirty work, but great. And we'll be in the systems to validate everything that if we lean on that as yes, the Wix four preview zeros working us, I give us a chance that we can be ready by May 4th um, to be like putting all this stuff together. Um, that's the things that I'm working on. I know that I just got another bug, but I'm expecting the harvest of payloads bug is pretty straightforward. Um, we didn't give the bug that's not open for updating the hashes to anybody, but, so someone will need to pick that up. Um, and then Sean, I know you're doing some work that you're trying to finish that's uh, in here. So how realistic does May 4th feel independent of what I'm doing, like what, what you guys see out there? Well, we haven't mentioned Doc. I, well, yeah, and, and Doc, I'm kind of like, I can just keep doing Doc that whole week, <laughs> like that the week of May 4th or May 3rd, I guess, the week of that week as just improving the dock and running it, running it, running it, running it improving it um, as it goes. Or we can just go, you know what, that's not a good answer, let's slip it. <laughs> Which we may have to say anyway. Um, Sean, I know you're doing some work, you're talking about the 32-bit-isms, um, that you're eradicating more of them, or pure 32-bit-isms. 32 um, do you have anything else in preview zero? that you're thinking of, how you're feeling about what you're doing now, so on and so forth, being well, done? It's more that I have a lot of work to do, so I'm just going to continue working. And when I finish something, I'm gonna, I want to push it. <laughs> so there's nothing more that I want in Preview Zero. OK. All right, so that just says that we need to get the preview zero going and then get the next branch for where the work goes. And that is fine. That's very straightforward. I already have a plan on how to do that. So um, that is part of my process that I'm working on now with the repo re reorganization um, rolling forward to get the um, place so that you can target that. Okay, great. Um, so you're basically then what I'm hearing is you're you're kind of set um, at this point. And Bob, you raised Doc as a thing that needs tender love and care uh, to finish the integration that you've already done the bulk of it on. And I know that there's a part for me to do in that which I haven't got to. So if we don't hit the fourth. Do we go as quickly as we can? Do we give it some breathing room? What do other people think? I'm just so close to it, I don't know which one I should pick, what answer to pick at this point, if that makes any sense. Opinions, thoughts? You guys are not helping me at all. You're like, whatever. 
Well, I mean, I guess as soon as possible would be nice. Okay. <laughs> I think there's no reason to hold it. Just, you know, just to, you know, hit a particular date. Okay. So if it's not the fourth, so it, basically we're talking a day-to-day -day slip kind of thing. Like, as soon as we get done, then we will push it, and the fourth is still possible. And, but that means that, you know, it could be the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, just it slides day to day after that. Um, and if we hit the 13th, then we're at another meeting and we will recap on either, hey, look, preview zero's out, or, um, or, um, if, if We'll talk about either we will talk about hey here's the status of preview zero what it looks like it's doing or hey we're almost ready to ship preview zero i hope um in two weeks right is that the right way to approach it yeah okay i mean if you want a new date that would be a good new date uh, the 13th if you if you need a date to help motivate you i don't need a date to motivate me i just need, i'm just i the the build process is well you know how it goes it's like you make you know five steps forward and then one step back or one step takes forever and you don't know it's very back and forth um yeah jacob for your uh jacob or sean can you guys remind me um are there breaking changes in taking the uh the registration persistence thing um publicly facing breaking changes? Yeah, I think the only breaking changes, well, no. Because it's an internal represent, where we store the data has never really been documented, right? So it's okay. just moving the storage location of the persisted data. So technically speaking, Jacob doesn't have to hit preview zero unless he wants it there to see it himself, right? The only part that could be breaking is if we add an, an initial implementation and then for some reason we have to change the implementation later, then that changed implementation will no yeah. longer be able to read the older bundles. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, nobody should be shipping preview zero bug one. So um, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, that's why they're previews. Um, we're not guaranteeing that preview zero to preview one stuff will be backwards compatible, upgradable kind of thing. So, I, I, yeah, we're not giving that level of guarantee, so I'm not worried about that one. All right, that's cool. Yeah. Clearly, Preview Zero is going to go out with a, oh, uh, what's the label, Bob, that the .NET Core team, not ready for ship? No, they, it's the other way around. They, they call it, is it ship ready? Go live. Go live. Go live. It is not going with a go live license. We will not have a go live license on Preview Zero. Do not go live with Preview Zero. I'm going to make it's that go there. It's a go <laughs> It's a go experiment locally license and give us feedback so that we can work our way towards going live successfully. Because if you open bugs later, we're going to be like, ah, oh, oh, be like, where were you in preview zero? Um, so, all right. So the goal, I'm still lying in sand with the waves crashing all around us, um, around me, of hitting May 4th. It's all just working through and putting it all in finalizing it so I still feel okay about it um, if not we're looking at day-to-day -day slip and we will definitely talk about it um, in uh, May 13th Wow May okay yes all right yeah I sure. okay sure uh, you guys are <sighs> clearly I know where I stand all right um, on that note, I think we're at questions, comments, other things people want to talk about. So I was trying to figure out when I can push my changes because I would rather not have to make Jacob have to do more work with the merge conflicts. Ah, so that's a question for Jacob, um, which we have to give him a couple seconds for the delay in the feed to catch up to him. Oh, I just noticed we've never had this many comments before and the comments aren't scrolling. Oh, 
Oh wait, maybe I can get the scroll. Can I get the scroll? All right, live editing. Very dangerous to do, but here we go. We're gonna try. Oh, I can't reach it. So in every repo, native repo, you're having to change the version number in the project file to say which version of the dependency you have. So you, if I don't see how you're building locally if you're not changing those. Uh, if you don't mind that, then I don't expect us to have changes in the same area. So I might just push mine. Okay, that would be good because uh, getting your changes in. Jacob, how far are you from having a PR? Because that will then tell me whether I look at, um, well, and it's in, he said it was in Dirl and Burn, right? Those are the two changes he's making? He kind of has two separate changes. He has the Burn implementation yep. of changing where it's stored. And then he has the ability for a bundle to ask the engine for something. So that's volutal Burn to you. Oh, I see, right. Yep, persistence and then the access, okay. Yeah, okay, so those are separate PRs. That's fine. Um, I don't I don't know if he's gonna do it separately, but I'm just thinking that's okay. All right. The registration. Is okay. that one of the tests that are skipped right now? Or is you're enhancing the tests with your new changes? This is where I missed the delay to have a hash on the registration. Seems to be off. Is the PR already up? Did I? He sent something to Wix devs. I didn't have time to look at it before okay. the meeting. Oh, maybe it's like a, a fork, right? Yeah. So Jacob, it's uh, Sean actually showed me this through his use of it. You can actually create a draft PR, which is really easy then for us to know that it's not ready, but it's easy then it lands in our world so we can see it, and then you can just pull it if you don't, or whatever. Um, so that that makes it really easy for us to see it then, and not accidentally commit it if you're just looking for feedback, because the GitHub UI is very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you send in his draft and say, hey, can you guys just look at this? Then that's that's the easiest way probably for us to get notified that it's there. Um, and if you and then put, you would just force push yeah, then you whenever should, you have changes. Exactly. If you would just force push on top of it, it keeps going up until the day that it's good. Then you push the, this is no longer a draft, and then you go forward. Um, yeah, it's the the UI threw me, but once you submit a PR, there's a button you can do to change it back to a draft because I didn't hit the little drop-down button when I first created my first draft PR. Um, but it, it's a it's a great idea. Um, Sean always out there finding all the new features, so it's good stuff or old features that <laughs> are new to me, whatever the case may be. All right, Most so this comes from .NET runtime when I'm looking around there. Yeah, what they're doing, yeah. Um, all right, so we'll see how that, where that lands. Jacob, you and I may be coordinating the PR to the, to the new repo, um, which is fine. I've done it enough times now that I'm feeling pretty good about being able to do that. And I've I'm not even, I haven't tried taking a PR because I've tried to do all file moves, um, so that the history is maintained. So I, it might even if it's just like source code changes, it might even just flow straight in. Although it won't be because you have to use the changes. But anyway, uh, we will see um, how that goes. All right, so Jacob, just keep making your progress, send that draft, and then we will see how it lines up with everything else. And Sean, if you're good to go, go ahead and get your stuff in because I have planned to go back and um, refresh all of my merges from all of the repos into the mono repo um, as soon as I get all of the tests in tools, what was tools passing. Um, I have most of them. I just have to get the SDK tools because 
finding the SDK code is not working right now. Um, once I have that done, then I'm going to go do another refresh because I have not done any work on the extensions to bring them in. I was going to do them at the end later after I got the core of stuff working, which means burn all the APIs, converters, um, and the tools and core, all those like the big, the big ones with the mix of where the, there's the massive mix of managed and native code in the build system. So that's where I'm at on that. Okay. That's it. That's all I got. Anything else? Not from me. Bob, I will be hitting you up on documentation as soon as I finish this build process change. Um, to get that Yay. Done. I know. It's the last mm -hmm. thing on my my list. Um, you know, we didn't... I, I, we probably should have looked at... I'm going to go back real quick. Oh, I want is, oh, and I'm, what I'm doing is getting the query right up here for what's left in preview zero. This is where I should have been. So what we're talking about just now with Jacob is this last one, this bottom one here, which technically speaking does not have to be preview zero. So if it slips, totally okay, because um, I don't think it'll be breaking changes for that we really have to get the feedback on. I think it'll just be a, it'll be an additive cool feature. NuGet package, as I mentioned before, is, gets resolved when they get published. This repo re reorganization is what I'm on right now. Um, going back to a mono repo, and then there will be lots of discussion about the, the experience there, so people can catch up. Um, but given that I've had two aborted attempts at how to do that, um, and one failed, massive failed one, there will be lots of things to sit and chew on. Um, Extension should version their IDs. Bob, I, I saw you make progress on this one. Yeah, um, there's still a couple left. Um, um, we have to take a look at the tag extension. Okay. Um, just because of how it changed recently. Okay. Um, then I think there are three other um, extensions left. Um, IIS, which is not tiny. Nope. And why I haven't jumped right on it. And then Complus and MSMQ, which are old and creaky and I don't particularly care about them, which is why I also have not jumped on them. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, okay. it's, uh, I will have them done by May 4th. We will, all right, we'll just have to sync up about where the, the repos at when you choose to do them. So when you're making those changes. Or we can skip them. They really do not need to be done in preview zero. I I wanted they're not public. I wanted them right. Well, they're oh none they're of not them in the list. Are on the list. Okay, I'm uh, not going to worry about this one then. Which is now I'm yes. I'm they really don't need to be done in preview zero, do they? Okay. Yeah, I'm not um, stressing. Yeah, about they're them. not on the list, and um, you know it's it's just not that big a deal. Okay. Um, tech speaking, we probably could remove the 4.0 preview zero tag from this then, because you've done the 4.0 preview zero ones. Would you like me to? Does that, I'm sorry, I should have, should we remove the 4.0 preview zero tag label since uh, the ones that are in preview zero have been done? I I don't want to say it just because I don't want to work on it this weekend. But that Oops. makes oh no, I accidentally removed the tag. I'm okay. sorry. No, I didn't think Sean was going to scream. Uh, documentation. Sense to change to, yeah. yeah, I don't want to create another issue because it's just like, yeah, fine. We did the 4.0 preview zero stuff. It's done. That's in. It's not completely done. The rest will be done. Yay. All right. We talked about doc. Need to do that. Sign all the things is incorporated into the massive build changes um, that I've been working on. So hopefully, well, this will work when I'm all done with all the build things that I'm doing right now. Um, I have verified it in the small. I need to then verify it in the big um, and then integrate it into the official build so it turns on with all the secrets protected. And then harvest payloads are never assigned a download URL. This will probably be the first fix I do <laughs> after I get all this previews, uh, this uh, build stuff done. Um, and that'll check that off. And then we will be at zero bugs, whether this just gets the label 
removed, this allow access persisted variables gets the label removed or it gets checked in. One way or another, it will go that way. This has already been refreshed. So, so yeah. So this is the only question of whether that gets in or not. All right. That's looking pretty good. That's where we're at preview zero. This is obviously the big thing we're working on. Um, <laughs> so close. I just need to make the finish the effort. So on that note, I'm going to go back and work on that. We'll be back in two weeks, like we talked about, uh, talking about May 13th. I'm going to, uh, real quick, is there any any thoughts? Should we consider a meeting on the 6th if we're going to get that close to preview zero, or just nah, call it 13th and call it good? I don't have strong opinions. What would the meeting would be for celebrating releasing it? Or? Yeah, you're right. That would be kind of yeah. We'll be back in 13th. We'll be back in two weeks, and we will have an update, hopefully, an update on how well Preview Zero is and how it's doing out there. And we will immediately be looking at all those things that are post Preview Zero because Sean's already got his queue going um, of things that he's already going to be working on. So on that note, we'll be back in two weeks. Same time, same place, next date. It was great having all of you in the chat. That was fun, having a few people, all the interactions, good. And um, yeah, until then, everybody stay safe. <sighs> Keep your fingers crossed. Here comes Preview Zero. Bye. Bye. Bye.